For this project, you could use any size piece of wood, any kind of wood, or even a canvas if you'd like. I use these little pre-finished slats from Walmart. Each slat was like a buck forty-five, and I've got six of them there. And you saw how we added it, uh, connected them on the back with just some simple strips. Now I've already drawn my pumpkin on the front, and what I'm going to do now is use IOD Iron Orchids Designs Trimmings number three, and I'm choosing the smallest one there. When you want to add clay, IOD clay, to these molds, you want to use a little cornstarch in them first. And here I just roll it out into a long string and then make sure it's pressed in there really well. Then I start on one edge and take off that excess with my thumb. There patented micro rim edges make it really easy to do that but to get the rest of it off I like to use my little Japan scraper there and I just push it along and I get a perfect straight edge now to undo the clay from your mold you want to let gravity do the work so just flip it over and gently lift it off then repeat Tight Bond Thick and Quick is the only glue I like to use to attach the molds, the clay molds or the resin molds to any kind of project. And I like to use a brush. You can use your finger, but I like the brush. It keeps my hands from getting too sticky and I can get that, with that brush, I can get it all the way to the edges because it's really important to get those edges all the way out to the end. And then I'm just gluing them in sections. Um, right where the ribs of the pumpkin were. So here it is, glued on. For the pumpkin stem, I again used Iron Orchid Designs air dried clay and spent some time shaping it. But to give it some texture, I am using their uh, IOD stamp that gives the textured wood, the barn wood stamp. And they have several different textures with that stamp. So I just chose a few and stamped in the clay here and there. You'll be able to see a lot better at the end once this is painted, uh, and I have some close-ups. You can really tell that it looks like wood. And again, using Tight Bonds Thick and Quick, I will glue that onto the top of my pumpkin there, and I'm just using a little tool to kind of blend the, the stem into the ribs of the pumpkin. I've let the air dry clay dry overnight. I just wanted to show you. Make sure I'm in the picture frame here. You can see there are some cracks in the finish. Now, if you don't like that, I'm going to show you how you can fix that a little bit. Sometimes I don't mind the cracks, other times I don't really want them there. So I can take a small piece of the air dry clay and just use the air dry clay like a putty. It's very, very thin. and it will just fill in those little cracks. So my thoughts on this piece is I really kind of want it to stay um, tone on tonish. I love the, the weathered wood with the brown and the white on top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this Waverly Wax um, water-based wax uh, just says antique wax it doesn't really 
give a color name. But I know from using this that it's going to be a very similar color to the darker tones in the wood. Now, I can try to use it straight, and I'm using a little bit of a stiff brush for this. But if I need to water it down, I can do that too. And I'm basically just going to go over. Okay, so there's no water. Dip my brush in my water. And now you see it lightens it and lets it spread a little bit easier. And I can have some areas that are darker as well. I will be going back over this though with some white paint and then wet the stressing back so that some of this brown will show through. Okay, I need to let this dry. I like the look, I've got different colorings of brown, kind of like the different colorings of the browns in the wood. When it's dry, we'll come back with the next part. All right, I've been playing around with this a little bit. seeing how I wanted to apply now I'm going in this direction because that's the grain of the wood and I don't think I'm going to have to do much wet distressing because I'm basically just kind of dry brushing. But I'm not using any water with my paint because, see how it's graying out there? I really don't want too much of that. I'd rather have some areas that are starker white than others, but I'm deciding where that will be based on the grain of the wood. So where I have these areas that are darker brown, I'm not going to put on as much paint. I'm going to be kind of careful about placement. What do y'all think? I love it as is, but I'm thinking about giving it one little extra touch, like maybe down here in the corner. I ordered this leaf mold not realizing that it was super tiny. Not a very great mold, but these are maple leaves and they're very thin. There's no way to cast, uh, to use clay in them. So I've mixed up my amazing casting resin. You can order this, uh, but you can also find it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joams. You just need to make sure you get the right one. This one says turns white and cures in 10 minutes. That's pretty important. Um, the other one cures, it's clear, but it, it's going to take about eight to 10 hours to set up. I don't wanna wait eight to 10 hours. So I like to get the one that cures in 10 minutes, especially because I'm always painting them. So it doesn't matter. So I've got equal parts of A and B in these little cups. Just going to pour one part into the other. You need to make sure you've got equal, as close to equal as possible, although this type of resin is a little bit forgiving. Now, when you first start mixing, I've shown this before, it's milky. And you just wanna keep mixing until it's clear, but not very long, it's only gonna take about 30 seconds and you're gonna feel the bottom of your cup starting to get warm. That's already clear, so I am going to pour. 
very carefully because these are super tiny and I don't want to over pour them. because it'd be impossible to trim around. So it's more like just a little bit of dribbles and let them float out into the tiny bits. I sometimes use a toothpick to help move the resin into those very tiny details. Don't know how this stamp's gonna come out. It's a very cheap stamp. But we'll just let that sit and I'll come back. These things are super tiny. I don't know. I'm thinking they might add a cool touch down here with a few of them. We'll see. The first fall project for my booth. Falling for it. How about you?